My name is Tone and welcome to the HTD Show, the Hot Topic Discussions. Today we're going to be talking about the insurrection and how it affected the average Joe. Today we've assembled a panel of three normal uh, people, people from the community, people who have ties to the community, people who can give you a, a sense of feel, a different uh, sense of feel of um, this whole situation. Uh, people from all kinds of backgrounds and ethnicities. So um, let's get to this and we are going to go to change it up right here. All right. So we have, um, I'm going to introduce one by one and we're just going to go around. Um, Ms. Elder, uh, Esmeralda, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Esmeralda Xochitl Flores. You can call me Esme. Um, I am a born and raised San Fernando Valley girl um, and I'm currently living in Long Beach. I am currently working in education and I would also consider myself a community activist and an actor. Great, thank you for coming tonight. Um, Tavares, please yes. introduce yourself. My name is Tavares Render. I am a uh, California native, but I'm living in Wyoming at the time. Um, I'm also a published writer. I've uh, written a book called Truth Be Told and currently working on another one. Part time, I work at Lyft, so I get around and uh, get to see some of the people in the community and speak to them. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. And Alma. Hi, good night. I'm Alma Hernandez. I'm currently a social worker with the state of California. I'm also an uh, activist in the sense that me and uh, Esmeralda know each other for a long time and our roots started with Cal State Northridge and uh, as students coming up and dealing with the cultural issues that we had at hand back in the day. Awesome. So Ladies and gentlemen, this is our panel and we're gonna get right into things. So today's topic today, the hot topic of discussion for today is the insurrection, the American insurrection, what happened at the Capitol? So any thoughts? Uh, we're gonna kick it off with Ama. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, this was something that was, I can't say unexpected, but I can say that it was, very much disrespected, disrespecting of the politics in the United States. It is something that um, we, if you think about it, a Confederate flag was flown in the Capitol. And um, that, has, that has the same stigma that it did back in the 1800s. So um, it's not only a political movement, it, or a coup, if you want to call it that. It's uh, it's putting the votes of the people like you and I in question, and that's that's just sad. And the trust of the American people is never going to be the same. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, Esme, any thoughts? First thought is to make sure that I'm off of mute. Um, <laughs> and we like you that way. <laughs> you know, not everyone would agree with you on that, um, though I do know who needs to be on mute and I'm glad that Twitter agreed with that and we all know who that is. Um, what, what has taken place? I mean, similar to what Alma said, this is to me not surprising at all, um, but is, is much more disturbing that I feel like I'm seeing in just regular media that they're not making as big as a deal about it as I think they should. Um, from labeling something from a, a protest gone wrong to, okay, it's a mob, a to be like, okay, well, maybe this is an insurrection. Okay, maybe it's a coup, but it's not a coup or it's unwell. Like at the end of the day, there's people that thought they were in a revolution trying to take over in the name of one man. And so how I feel about this is very disturbed, um, not surprised, but it definitely is, is, is another of a series of wake up calls about the division of our country and also the divisiveness of the man that has been sitting in office for the last four years. Those are my initial thoughts right now about this. Wow, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, <clears throat> powerful, uh, it affected 
a lot of people, I mean, like deeply, because that's something no one would have ever thought that we would see. I mean, not here. You know what I mean? Uh, Tavares. Yes. Um, I want to I want to first say that 90 uh, percent, I believe, of the people that are upset are people that voted for Trump and believed in something other than what he put out there. As far as the other 10 percent like us, we already were mad. He was in office anyway. We've already been mad. So I agree with the uh, other two ladies. Uh, it's not a surprise. It's 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 really not something unexpected. But the big picture that I saw out of it was it was allowed. Um, this isn't something that, you know, these people got together and said, let's go do this. This is something that came from the top and said, OK, you guys don't have to worry about this. And this is what's going to get taken care of. And whenever you put somebody uh, or give somebody as much as power as they gave and given Trump, you can't take it away from it. And that's where he's at. He's not going to allow people to take away. He's showing his power now by letting people know I can just send people anywhere I want. And these people are uh, privileged people. Unfortunately, they are white, but they are privileged. And at the end of the day, you know, we got all the minorities or the others who are sitting aside upset about the situation. And um, what they really want is us to act out. So my at the end of the day, my, my whole thing is be wise, you know, instead of embellishing in what they want you to embellish and, in, you know, be wise about what is really going on and how much action that they have, you know, to do what they want to do before we start trying to you know, uh, go up against that in, in, in the same way that they're going up against. Like we can't, Black Lives Matter, other lives matter, none of us can do what they did. So we're we already lost in that era. Um, but yeah, that's my my idea of, uh, or my thoughts of uh, what's going on. Uh, totally, totally agree. I, I feel where you're coming from. Um, and this thing has seriously taken everybody back. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, we take our freedom for granted. You hear a lot of times, if you talk to veterans, they always talk about, you know, people here taking their freedom, freedom for granted. And I think that's because, or better yet, I know that's because the experiences that they had abroad. I mean, because if you've never traveled outside the country, and let's be honest, you know, that's not a big portion of the country, you know what I mean? Um, you don't know what it's like. So I think when veterans speak from that perspective, you know, they, they speak from seeing in other eyes, you know what I'm saying? Um, when they say that we take our freedoms for granted. Um, but with that being said, um, I wanted to move into the differences between the protests, meaning um, what happened at the Capitol was a MAGA, protest. That's what it was. Call it, call it what it is. That's what it was. You know what I mean? Um, before they even got there, the president had his little rally and then they moved to the Capitol. It was a MAGA event. Now, I want to talk about how it made you feel when you watched that, the differences between that MAGA rally and what you seen, what we've all seen, what our own eyes, when it comes to the Black Lives Matter rally or the ICE protest rally. You know what I mean? The differences between what happened at the Capitol and those. I mean, because if anybody, if you've been paying attention, if you're being honest with yourself, it screams volume. It's there without even having to be said. But with that being said, Esmeralda, how do you feel? I think you're gonna get the same energy the whole time. Um, it, it, there's an intensity that um, isn't new. So it isn't like seeing what just took place um, angered me in a way that I haven't been angered before. It is just this slowing, ongoing frustration um, for, <laughs> 
for, for a very long time. And so in particular about the differences, I think just even watching general news, listening to or flipping through basic social media, maybe someone who doesn't spend a lot of time being informed, they're too busy you know, working and trying to make their money handle business. At the same time, I think it's very clear that when we hear about news coming up, that when we're talking about engaging with a protest that generally is peaceful, it's usually us hearing about uh, police uh, or those in charge taking action upon um, black and brown bodies and, and actions of ways of that it, that is causing chaos, that is causing hurt, that is causing straight murder. Um, and, and that's what we've seen in situations in particular connected to this rally and other Black Lives Matters rallies or other rallies of different topics that are also very important. Um, the one key thing that I, I think about from this particular one is is the the role that the current sitting president took. So the role that he took in this particular protest was I have this rally, I rally people up, I tell them to go that way. And then he like goes over to the White House, says, I'm gonna go to the restroom real quick and I'll meet you up there and decides to hide out while everyone's <laughs> taking you know everything down. Um, and, and doesn't act upon it. And then people are asking, hey, these are your people, you need to act upon this, you need to tell them to, to calm down, blah, blah, blah. Um, we think about that instance and how slow he was to react, but the reaction it wasn't even really coming from him on taking charge and trying to take control back. And then we flip back to another time when I remember there was a protest and he wanted to take a picture with the Bible at a particular church. And so was clear with making sure that people were gassed to get out of his way so he can say, hey, I'm holding the Bible. And it talks about his priorities. It talks about who matters um, in, in this case. And so there, that is just one clear difference that comes to mind um, about this. And you're right. I mean, no matter which aisle or um, which side of the aisle, rather, that you sit on, I mean, that's outrageous. You know, um, when it comes to the example that you brought up as far as, you know, clearing a whole section out just so you can take a photo op in the middle of people grieving, you know, people having some, um, some, some, something to get off their chest. People, it's, it's, it's the height of um, privilege. And, and to me, I feel like it's showing people where their place is in, in a sense. But Tavares, how do you feel about this? Um, I don't know. Like I said earlier, it's a, uh, it's pretty much something that you know, isn't a surprise to me. Um, I think in the '60s when there were those activists back then rallying for freedom and uh, you know certain rights, even women's rights. I mean, you fast forward it today and we're doing the same thing. We're, we're, we're marching and protesting for, you know, the um, respect or the, um, we, we, we're, we're trying to get them to be aware that our lives matter, you know, just like they were back then. Um, the bad part, I think, when it comes to the protest of uh, what they were doing is you got to remember what those words stand for, make America great again. So for him, he's trying to let people know that he has control and this is a form of it. This is a form of the control that he has. This is really a small window of a warning to what's to come because he has total control over nationwide certain police departments where all he has to do is send out a Twitter or a text and they all conform. That's why all these deaths were happening. That's why all the police were doing this nationwide. It wasn't by coincidence or just something going on. It was a actual text or a, or a letter that had been sent, you know what I mean? Via to that individual who was the head of that. And it's, that's what's happening now. You cannot go to the Capitol and go in there like it's McDonald's, you know what I mean? And the way they did, they walked in as if they, it was their house. So that isn't just a slap in the face to 
us as citizens and Americans who follow the right. law, it's a slap in the face to everything we stand on, which is everything is us supposed to be up under God. No one's following the laws. So, you know, that's that's just my, you know, outlook of it. As far as the differences, it's, it's right. just, it's a power thing. We don't have as much as power as they do. Right. And but that's I, what they're trying to let you know. Where you're coming from, because if anybody takes the time to look at the footage, oh my gosh, they look so comfortable, don't they? They yeah. look like there's yeah. nothing to worry about. They have right. no worries at all, you know? Right. And and, and the, just the disrespect of that. I mean, yeah. really? For authority. I mean, this is supposed to be, okay, first off, it's the Republican Party. And supposedly, supposedly the party of laws and, you know what I mean? And respect for law enforcement and, yeah. It's, I mean... Well, can I interject real quick? Because I, I wanted not to cut you off. I wanted to add also that it's the, the biggest disrespect of everything outside of, you know, <clears throat> the protest is the veterans. You know how many veterans and people have died for this country, for that capital? You know what I mean? And they went in there and did worse than foreigners do. And right. any terrorist that could have ever did, you know, to us, they went in there and disrespected every veteran that has died and fought for this country. So that that's also something to be aware of. No, you are right. You're totally right. Alma, your thoughts on this? Oh my gosh, my thoughts. These are going to be very passionate thoughts. Um, unfortunately, I feel very, pa I mean, fortunately, we're discussing this, but it is a us versus them. If you think about it, America is us versus them. If you're not white, then you're them. If you're white, then you're us. And that means you're entitled and you're privileged. And just like Tavera said, you can walk in wherever you want. There are no consequences. Um, you know, there's a double standards. No person of color would have ever gotten as far as these people got, come on. No person of color would have ever been able to storm an, uh, a federal building and, um, you know, go in and sit at someone's chair. Come on. You know, uh, nobody would have waved a Black Lives Matter uh, flag at a federal building the way that they waved a Confederate flag. Um, if you really look at things, Politics and racism has been a discussion, but there's really never been a solution for it. The systemic racism that we have in this country, and Tavares mentioned it, since the 60s, we've been trying to get that quote unquote other, like these people don't belong here, people of color, Asian, even black people who have been here, Native Americans who were the founding fathers of this country, not, not the people who think they are the founding fathers, but the Native Americans who are. Um, there's still other. And I hope that you guys understand it's because it's a separation. It's a systemic thing. It's not, they're not us. And in true being Mexican American, I still don't feel American. I still have to put that Mexican American, African American. I don't know, Salvadorian American, whatever we are, it's other. It's never, it's never American. And the true picture of American when you walk in the door is what? Blonde, blue eyes, Caucasian? Well, you know what? And, and it's, it's really funny because we are supposed to be known as the melting pot, right? <laughs> How can you be a melting pot when you know, everything is like the Stepford Wives, you know, I mean, everything is like, you know, assembly line, you know, um, yeah. and you're not part of that assembly. Uh, but anyways, so yeah, those, those were some pretty deep thoughts and um, feelings about the differences between the two. And, and believe me, if you have been watching the news or have been up on the uh, current events at any moment these past uh, four years, that term, you understand the weight and the gravity of the differences between the protests. I mean, because the Black Lives Matter protests, the ICE protests were probably the two protests that were met with the most resistance that we've had that during his um, tenure. 
although the first protest was, I think it was the women's protest after he got in, that big women's protest. Yeah. Now, they didn't like that, but there wasn't, you know, the problems that you had with all the other ones that followed. And the ones that followed were first the ICE and then the Black Lives Matter, you know? So the women protests, they were okay with, but then once the colors started to change with the other two, it just seemed like to me, things got a little different in the way that they um, enforced the rules. Um, so with that being said, uh, we're going to talk about specifically the problems at the Capitol. I mean, it has to be addressed only because, you know, for all these other protests, oh, there was so much security. I mean, and, and I'm not even talking about, you know, calling for the National Guard. I mean, they had, they just called in from other counties and districts and they got more backup. That was it you know, without calling military force or semi-military force in um, the National Guard. Um, but for this, they didn't even do that. It was just like the regular staff. I mean, like, okay, so with that being said, let's see how the people think. Alma? You know what I thought about? I thought about the the same thing I just mentioned about us versus them. It's like us, the the minorities, the people of color are the ones that loot, that you know, that that do all the bad things when when we're protesting. But the whites, you know, how dare they need security? They're just protesting. So it is again back to that double standard. But I also think, and I agree with Tavares, that there was some type of law enforcement backing them up because there was just a lot of it can be a coincidence that they knew exactly where they were going they knew exactly i saw a video myself where they removed the barriers i don't know if any of you saw it but they removed the barriers and basically kind of come on in kind of like tavari said about mcdonald's come on in welcome to mcdonald's what can we get you Yes, I, I do believe that again that's the double standards because if it was black and brown people you know, standing there, they would be scared. I mean, my friend, she always says that, you know, they're always scared of the other. So, but there was no fear for these individuals that obviously caused a lot more damage than what was done for the Black Lives Matter or for us um, expressing our disdain with this uh, immigration policy of separating families. I mean, that that's horrible, but these these protests were meant to be peaceful and bring awareness. This, my, my, this was just not, this was totally a violent situation where they wanted to make sure that government knew that if they didn't get their way, they would forcefully get it. So that there's two different things there. And I do think that the security had something to do with it. I also saw postings about face, um, on Facebook that people were taking selfies and that, you know, police members were engaging with the rioters. So unfortunately, and we know this again, back to systemic racism, our police department might be, might have some of those individuals that voted for Trump who are diehard. I'm not saying all police because I'm sure that there's police members that are, you know, not associated with that, but I'm saying, there's neighbors who we don't know who might be extremists. And, you know, it is one of those things where if you take it back to fascism, this is the worst form of fascist that we have seen in a long time. And if you think one more thing, the way that the United States looks worldwide, that's even worse right now. The, 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 the world is laughing at us. They were laughing at us before, but now, it's not even a laughter. It's more of a wow. Yes. Right. And, and you know, it's funny. It's funny that you say that because it <clears throat> seems like, you know, it almost seems like, you know, in those old cheesy um, movies where mm -hmm. like you have like the dork who isn't all that popular and the pretty girl, and then you have the jock, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, 
you know, the jock and the pretty girl always together and the dork wishes he can get with her. And, but then, you know, he's always terrorized by the bully who was in this situation. I swear, at least to me, I swear we feel like the jock. America was the jock. And now at the end, of, you know, at the end of those movies, what happens? He ends up getting laughed at. Everybody's laughing at him. You know, they're like, oh, OK, you know, you were wrong. You know, uh, ha, ha, you know, they, you're the butt of the joke. And that's how I feel that we are right now, because with the way that this has played out, how could we ever chastise another nation without getting some throwback for what we allowed with this clown? Uh, and I don't mean to say clown, but I, I just want to, let me back up with this past president. I'll, I'll put it that way. I mean, but really though, I mean, because it's bigger than one person. You know what I mean? That's why the office is so coveted because it's bigger than one person. Nobody who's ever sat in that seat, I think, thought that it's all about me, totally. You know, they might've had some ambitions on the side, but they knew they had a job to do. And this time it was like, I don't even care if I got a job to do. It was like, you know, how can I, how can this benefit me? But that's my view. But Tavares, how do you feel about this? Um, a couple things is uh, I like to speak on is is the fact that uh, I think Trump is he, he's not I I think he's a clown, but I just I think he's not just any clown. I think he's a billionaire who's connected with the right important billionaires um, in the United States, and as I said before. Um, to have that kind of power where, you know, the officers were taking pictures. So we're not talking about these people saying, you know, you guys got to go ahead because you're followers or Magna uh, supporters. We're talking about the police officers who were, if you, you know, and I, I've looked at it a couple of times when you look at the video, there's no angry faces. Mm -hmm. There are no angry cops. There are no cops who's got guns out. There's no batons. There's no tasers. And and the most and the worst of it all is they're taking pictures. So um, wait, wait, we did see one baton, but that brother was running, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, he was using that as a, as a to balance himself to get he up the stairs. He was running up the stairs. He was getting out of dodge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, on on another note. Um, we got to start looking at, you know, we, we get upset and we, 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 we give our opinions and our ideals and a lot of our anger issues to um, conversations to these people. But we really got to look at why. Well, that's the question is, is why, you know, um, why would you do this? Well, why is it allowed? So, you know, this is a COVID-19 season. So if you really look at what's really going on, we're in a situation to where we're, we, the people, we have to act. And the only way we can act is, is to unify. And the reason why they're so cocky and they're a small percentage of people, because it's not like they're the majority. They just have the majority power. But the reason why they're like this is because they have manipulated and um, I guess you could say hypnotized us with all this technology. You know what I mean? For us to you know, be put off or look away from what's really going on. And then when something really happens, the most that we do, it's like that game pickaboo. If you put your hands over your eyes and then when you open it up, it's like you're surprised. That's what's been going on. They put stuff over our eyes to make us not see. And then when they open it, then it's like everybody's like, oh, look what they did at the Capitol. No, look what they did at 9-11. No, look what they did at, you know, with, you know, the, the victims of all innocent lives from Black Lives Matter, you know, look at what they did with the immigrants who weren't even immigrants, you know what I mean? Look how they treated all other people, as Alma said, um, and on the other tip, we're others. Right. And until we get back, even ourselves, we don't have to depend or wait on the, the uh, I don't want to say white people because it's not all white people, but we don't, I, I don't want to wait on a certain class of people for us to recognize that we got to get back to looking at each other as humans. 
and stop putting the title of black, white. If when I look at you know whoever I'm looking at, the first thing I'm gonna look at is they're human. Now after that, how they treat me and all of that, that's what gets them the title of whatever they are. But as far as unifying and coming together and just like us four people can sit here and listen to one another without all this, you know, uh, 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 yelling and back and forth. You know, you got to go back to the basics. Humans, humans respect humans and they know that they're equal. That's that's the the number one thing that we have to go back. And that's the number one thing that they took away from us. They you labeled know, us. You know, what? no, no, no. I was just going to agree. You are so right, because when you think about it, like if you are a if you're a parent at the playground and the playground is crowded with all kinds of parents and a child gets hurt, nobody stops to say like, wait, what color is that child before they help the child? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. 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 That's, what, that's what I think that you're talking about, right? And, we, that's and, what yeah, and, and, yeah. And speaking of children, that's the that's the second part of what I wanted to say is um, and you and you made up that's pretty much what I was going to say is if we don't look at each other like children do, you know, children go to the playground and unless they're taught a certain way, they'll play with any kid. You know what I mean? They just want to have fun and play. So, you know, it's obvious that that's taught, but um, like I said, with all the technology and uh, this new wave uh, social media where everybody is looking to be liked, how many likes did I get and all this? It is so hard to pull a child away or even an adult away from what's going on to really care about what's really happening. And until something really happens to where it directly affects them, which then by then it'll be too late, you know, then we're going to be set um, uh, aside, you know what I'm saying, for a moment. Uh, and I'm going to end this with, you know, this, this uh, statement with this is, uh, we have to, you know, a lot of people ask that question, what can I do? What can one person do? How do we do this? How can we? And and to be honest, it's it's not that hard. If you are working or whoever you allow yourself to be around socially, spread and share what you know, enlighten them. You know what I mean? With what's going on. You know what I mean? And that's that's another reason why I I I appreciate being on here because you're allowing us to, you know, enlighten one another. And this is how humans form that relationship that God wants us to have, you know what I mean? By, by understanding one another. I want you to keep that. I want you to keep that because we're going to come back to that. We're going to come back exactly to that point in a minute. Um, Ms. Laura, your thoughts on this, the capital uh, security or lack thereof. Um, I feel like uh, the two other panelists, I think, address the security issue. Uh, this was, I think, the most visible we saw in speaking of social media, what people have access to, seeing images over and over again of how easy it was, um, how police was just letting people go by, et cetera. My, my, my thoughts, I think, are like everyone else here. Uh, around how, not how could this happen, but more of like how disgusting for this to happen actually. Um, how, how, it's like a continued slap in the face of what we don't have, but what a few do have. Um, and that access, that power, that privilege which was brought up before. And, and I, think, I think a little further back it might lead into kind of the next kind of the next phase we're looking at, which Faraz was talking about is like, what do we do after this? But even then it's like, why, right? Like what is really the deeper why? And I think back of not only just the lack of seeing each other as humans, but also the lack of education, um, formal and informal. You know, that when, when you learn about the other, when you learn about other people's histories, when you just have basic conversations, then you start to open up um, and start to understand that you are a lot more alike than you are different. Um, and I think that the fact that there actually are, uh, it was brought up before, the, the systemic system that leads for these div divisions to take place. Um, and one of them is a system that we're on right now, um, utilizing technology, which of course we've had to use, ex um, 
three times over <laughs> in 2020 because at least in California, schools were closed down and kids were like, go to the screen, go to the screen. This is how we're educating you. Screen time, screen time. And then when you're not on the screen, practice on the screen. That's all it is. It's technology. I recently saw a documentary called uh, The Social Dilemma, I believe, and talked about how um, the algorithms are set up for us to be addicted and not move from scrolling and scrolling and, and one site to another site and that the information that is provided to us is so, so deep tell that depending on where you live, what gender you are, how you shop, whatever it is, is what you're going to receive. And sometimes I have people in conversations, they say, but how can they be so dumb? How could they not understand that this is wrong for them, or this is going against actually what they believe in? For example, not addressing that it isn't just white, for example, the Latinos for Trump, and there's quite a number of them, particularly maybe Cuban and, and Valenzuelan, but, but regardless, people say, how can Latinos be for Trump? And even part of it is like, where are you getting your information? We even have to think further deeply of how the information is, is provided to them and what they have access to. And I think a part of that why is what we have access to. And so that's a long about way of like saying, how do I feel about the security? The security sucked. I think we all know that <laughs> the security was, didn't do their job. Why didn't they do their job? I think, I think is really the deeper question. And I think a lot of us, uh, you know, I, I think that's the deeper issue right there. Right, right. And, and you are so right on that because since then there have been reports on the uh, breaches in security. And what I mean by breaches, I mean like um, directives that were given, you know, for people not to respond or to be busy or to um, whatever the case may be. There was a directive sent out and there are numerous reports right now. If you look on um, cable news, you have one side reporting it, one side denying it, but nobody's denying that there was reports that went out. You know what I mean? Um, so with that being said, what all that we talked about tonight, today, where do we go from here? I mean, how do we start the healing? How do we get to a place to where you can go to a family barbecue and not be like the Hatfields and McCoys, but be one family. You know what I mean? What, what, without that, without that um, extra uh, to it, you know what I mean? How do we heal as a nation, as a country? And we'll kick it off with Ms. Flores. Uh so this, <laughs> where do we go from here? I think that there's definitely steps that we can immediately do from here. And I think Tavares is already touching on that. Um, I would agree 100% that we need to continue to have conversations like this with people that we don't normally engage with to begin with. Um, you know, obviously within the circle, we're all sort of leaning one direction and that's okay. We still have our own lived experiences that take us there. And if we dive deeper, we may not be on the same on every topic and that's okay as well. But the number one thing is continue to having conversations <clears throat> and being uh, <laughs> open to do that. Sorry, I'm not gonna cry. I got stick out of peanut stuck in here from the nuts I was eating earlier. <laughs> one more. You know what? Let me finish off that point. I have a point too, but let me get some water, right? Let's go to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to, I don't know if I was next, but I wanted to um, add to what she was saying. But before I do that, I want to say, uh, I don't know if any guys heard, but there were so, so-called um, explosive devices found around in and around you know the capital so uh, i i only wanted to go back and touch on that because you were talk, talking about security and, and and what it's important about that being said is is that uh when the terrorists are home terrorists when we have inside terrorists it's very rarely that we're going to hear the media speak about that you know to a point to where we need to be scared oh. and in all actuality we really need to be scared well, um, since, since you brought that up, I do want to um, interject or throw in there that um, as far as the home terrorists and, 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 and the uh, media is concerned, that whole little situation right there, um, there has been so much. I mean, it is crazy. It's like 
a fire sale at the swapping. I mean, there are so many people telling on each other right now. There is so much news coming out. It's crazy. Everybody is trying to cover themselves. It's outrageous of the stuff that's coming out right now. And you're starting to, all these little, um, the initial response or the initial excuse or whatever have you, all of those are being blown apart by everybody just filling their guts right now because nobody wants to be responsible, right? Nobody wants to be like uh, liable for anything. So like, it's crazy. If you watch, you know, anything, cable TV and then your other news sources, you find out stuff is leaking like, you know, like crazy. It's, it's, yeah. it's a trip. Um, Alma, your thoughts. Oh, Ismay, you have a question? No, I, I just want to come back and finish my point. I, I apologize for that. But um, just to kind of like wrap up something I was saying about where we go from here, besides starting with our own humanity. Um, uh, Tavares, thank you for, for reminding us about, about what was found, because that is that is scary. Again, when people say, oh, they, it was just, you know, misguided group. It wasn't planned. There has been the more and more you read, there has been plotting and planning for this. Um, and it was clear when you consider what people brought with them, what they had ready for protests, et cetera. And so it is something to be alarmed about. I, I haven't smiled too much every time I speak because this is a very serious topic. And this is in, in and this is a serious threat for all of us in this country, as a country and as and, and our democracy, our, our very broken democracy to begin with. Um, but I think one key thing, and Alma had brought this up before, when we think about other movements that have come in, we think about them as, you know, the Black Lives Matter is a reform movement. Like we're not, Black Lives Matter, is, as far as I understand it, is not trying to take down the government. It's trying to change what is not working with the government to show and, 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 and let people know that other lives matter, that these lives are not being, um, equated to to as what I'm gonna mention the white lives, right? We're all othered. But it's where do we go? It's calling awareness yeah. to a situation that hasn't been addressed. Exactly. But it's not saying like like that one what it's Elizabeth from Knoxville. Right. Elizabeth from Knoxville, this is a revolution. You know, she may believe that and it may have done a mediocre job at it, but at the end of the day that there's more than one person believing that, whether the minority. And so I just kind of where do we go? I don't want to leave on a bad note, but I do want to say that education is 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 key. It isn't just seeing the humanity, but again, educating in in a in in a having the opportunity for people to have access to each other and access to knowledge and access to history. Um, I think is is one of the key things that is helpful in moving forward the situation so that things don't repeat itself in the idiot in the ridiculous way that they have been. Oh, I get you. We get you. Um, and, and and it's always been said, um, people who don't know their past are doomed to repeat it. You know what I mean? And this isn't something that we haven't done before. It's just something we haven't seen in a very long time. Um, Alma, your thoughts? Yeah, I just wanted to agree. You know, first of all, with Tavares, I do agree that, you know, it's not, I know I mentioned a lot about, you know, us versus them, but I know it's not just the entire white culture. I mean, you know, I appreciate that it's a selective few who are, again, it's kind of a, I want to say they've been brainwashed, kind of like Esmeralda said, and uh, they believe in these ideals that are not the best ideals, of course, but um, just twisted in a sense where they're like, yes, I want to grab onto that because it makes some sense to me. But where do we go from here? My biggest thing is, and I heard this on the news today, um, they were saying that Congress should pick a side. Republican, Democrat, are you against you know, the president? Are you with the president? Pick a side. And I thought for a minute, I was like, that's so ridiculous. When did decency go out the door? Like decency should be a government priority, just common decency. Someone who storms and breaks a Capitol federal building, incites a riot. How are you with that person? It should not even be a question. It should be off the table. It should just be, why are we not addressing the pink elephant in the room? Right, right. And you know what? And sadly, hold on, Anthony. Sadly, there's still people defending that stance. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Um, quite a few, as a matter of fact, so much to the point to where they are internally exploding. I mean, because they have people 
on the side on one side that says this is nonsense and on the other side they have people promoting it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so yeah they are paying the price for that themselves i mean there's going to have to be a lot of soul soul searching <laughs> on that side mm -hmm. um i mean really it is um as far as where do we go from here yeah um let me tell you uh i came from an era where PC wasn't really a thing, but you knew what was offensive and what wasn't. So mm -hmm. in the era that I came in, you know, people sometimes might have said things that were offensive, but you didn't take it offensively because you know they weren't being offensive. And this in this day and age, it's like, no. We are trying to be, uh, certain people are trying to be uh, what they imagine they can be. I mean, what I mean by that, they have, uh, they feel emboldened to throw PC out the window. This is how we feel. This is the right way. And anybody who opposes us is the wrong way. And that's not the way this country was made. It was made on a democracy to where we have different ideals, but we bond and we find a common ground. It's gotten to the point where it's been politicized so bad that partisanship has really become extreme to where nobody's trying to listen to the other side. And, 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 and I say that in terms of, yes, you have one side that's willing to listen more than the other. The other is just worried about their end game. But you have one side that's willing to listen more than the other. But on this other side, the more that they push and become offensive and, uh, and extreme, the people on this side who was willing to listen is becoming less and less and less. You know what I mean? So it's pulling us further apart instead of together. And something has to break. There has to be where people say enough is enough. And the way that that happens is when you come to a situation like what happened at the Capitol. Because for the first time, I feel the people in that chamber felt what it was like to be a people in one of those marches at the uh, Black Lives Matter or the ICE protests. And now we're all of a sudden having change. But with that being said, anybody have any parting comments? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? Okay. I I I do it. I I do, and um, I I respectfully disagree with you on one point, Tone, okay. and I just wanted to note that um, because you had noted that this is not what our founding country began as, but I I, I think history shows that I mean this country was founded on, on rape. It was, people came over and said, oh, look what I found. These right. people don't really matter. They're savages, we're taking this over. And and not only, you know, did what they did to the natives of this land, did what they did to the natives of another land, bringing them over. I, the, our history is full of atrocities to almost every minority you can think of. That is our history. And I think part of the problem is, I feel like as Americans, we, we tend to, lack of a better word, whitewash that history. And I think part of it is putting it in our face, how much of it has yet to be resolved, how much of it is still systemically there, still being passed on, and how someone, one man, it isn't about that man, he thinks it's all about him. But what he does is he represents the voice of a lot of people who have felt that their voice has been shrinking since the minorities have been growing, literally in numbers. Um, and therefore, as you grow in numbers, you're finding ways to grow in power. And at the end of the day, this is about power. Um, and so I keep saying, I don't want to end negatively, but I also don't want to sugarcoat how easy, what needs to happen. People are not listening, but it, it's bigger than that. It, it's generationally not listening. And we were, we were created in that way to be generationally split. I think one of the greatest strengths of this even conversation right here and, and what a lot, of, a lot of people of color are recognizing is that the more that we are collective together, I think the more we can address the systemic racism that was built, unfortunately, by the majority white people. And so I think that's just something to, to note that this is our history, it's ongoing, it's in our face, 
But the healing is that it's so much in our face that we have to address it. I feel like Alma, people are seeing that pink elephant finally. And at least when we're seeing it, we can at least have conversations like this where people are like, we can't deny it. Okay, and, and, and that's awesome. But let me clarify. When I said, or when I was talking or mentioning about the concept being where we came from or, or, or the foundation, I mean, the ideal, what I meant by that, the concept and the idea was great. It's, it's just that it didn't include everybody, meaning us. <laughs> the concept is great. <laughs> the concept is great. It just don't include us. It doesn't include minority. Um, and that's not being leaning one way or the other. If you look through history, and that's just the way it's been. You know, the words don't match the actions. That's all I'm saying by that. If they did, we'd be great right now. Um, Alma, any parting words? Yeah, I mean, I was I was going to piggyback off of your comment regarding the PC, you know, politically correct, uh, how it was before, how it is now. And the biggest thing with me is um, there are those now that are like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this President Trump, you know, he's not able to govern. He's unhinged or whatever they're calling him. But a lot of us who did not believe in his ideals knew this from day one. And we knew it because he ran on a campaign of hate and uh, he ran on a campaign of telling people that Mexicans were rapists. I'm not making this up. You guys saw that on the news, drug dealers, rapists, uh, that uh, all people from, uh, I don't know, the uh, United Arabs are, are terrorists and, you know, that every other race that we need a wall because, you know, people are climbing over to the United States and just, I can't say everything he said, but he ran on a platform of division. And I agree with Esmeralda. That division was blunt and it was there. So I think a lot of people started saying, well, if he can say it, what's, what's, what's stopping me from saying it? Of course, of course. And that's been the grind mm -hmm. of many people since he's got in office. The attitudes of a few have been um, acknowledged and okayed to the point where others feel emboldened to act out in that same way. And it has been, yeah, it really has been one-sided. Um, Mr. Uh, Tavares, any parting words? Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be, I don't know what the, uh, what carries is being negative, but I'm about to be all the way negative with it because <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not sugarcoating shit. America, I, uh, first of all, um, I'm going to speak off of what Alma and Ms. Esme said, because both of them are 100% right. And America, with the three Ks, is what we came up under. We came up under, now, your, and what you said was totally right, too, Tony, as far as the ideal. The ideal was for America, you know, for us. But the plan and the the the... The whole um, goal was for America with the triple K. So what that means is, you know, a lot of us are finding out things now, you know, whereas a lot of people have been knowing this long time ago. You know what I mean? Like Trump isn't just Trump. He is a catapult. If anybody, I don't really want to get into people's religions, but whatever you believe in is what matters right now. Um, Alma said something and I can't remember everything he said as well. But one of the things that stuck with me is when he made a comment, he said, I've done more than God and Jesus. To me, that's antichrist. That's, that's going against everything and anything that's higher and more uh, holier than he is. And basically that's what he's saying. He's saying, I've done more than God and Jesus. Well, so it's just like the comment, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I mean, it's just like the comment he said that he's done more for um, the black community than any president since um, Lincoln. That is true. You right. know, it's like, wow, really? <laughs> so, so, so I mean, all right, sorry, go ahead. No, no, saying, but saying, in saying that, this is a person like, you know, Esme said that he's speaking for a lot of people. 
And these people that he's speaking for are the same people that elected him in. But you got to understand these people are people that got a lot of money and they're a lot of dumb. They're not using the morals and the um, human, you know, fairness, treaty quality, all that's out the door. So where do we go from now and what do we do? We can't chat about it. So there's a certain period of time where we could have done a lot of things. You know, I think I think a lot of Americans should have came together when he was talking about nonsense about building the wall to separate us. But the whole objective of division, that is that's the whole objection, period, is division. Mm -hmm. So the opposite, where do we go from there? Like I said before, we have to unify within ourselves. We have to reach out in an uncomfortable situation or position and be kind to someone. What is that going to do for the unfairness that's going on? Nothing. The only thing that's going to change anything from here on is revolution. We're not going back to no, we're not, we're not, a war is going to happen. We're not going back to, oh, okay, they got that solved, COVID-19 is gone. Oh, okay, they got the police correct. Okay, so we just going to go back to, that's over with. This is higher than you know what I mean, a, a, a protest or a situation like the Capitol. This is the next move is new world order. You understand? Because whenever you get politics in the politics, whenever you get the Democrats and the Republicans and the when they're, they're at war, when they're at, when they don't know what to do, then the bigger picture is who's watching them? Russia, China, you think they're worried about us? No one's really worried about what's going to happen because everybody knows we're about to implode. Right. And we're going to implode because we can't accept, as people of color, we can't accept that we don't represent what we believe. And, and like I said, people are going to be negative about it. But I think people of color, the way we believe, we, we represent God. We love, we share, we pa we're patient. Whenever we're getting beat, Whenever we're getting done unfair, innocent people, you know, there's things that we could do as people that could be considered terrorism, but we would have all rights to do it because of what's, what has been done to us. And it's been done in other countries like that, you know what I mean, where the people up, they up rose and the people said, oh, they're, they're, they're going against the governor, they're trying to throw, no, they were tired of being oppressed. Right. So we're on a bigger scale and we're about to go into that same era, but they're so far ahead of us on the technology and you know, they have the military that all we can do is like a child in a daycare is cry about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, okay. So I thank you for all of you guys' input. I'm going to close out with my final thoughts. My final thoughts on this whole thing. Okay. Piggybacking off of something that you just said, you know, the people um, on the other side, uh, you had mentioned something about them having the money and whatnot. The sad part about this to me is that you have a small percentage who have that money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Who are calling shots and feeling that way. And they have another percentage of the people who are following that same percent. But the people with the money, they're not representing these other people. You see what I'm saying? So when you say that... Um, that, that, that the people with the money, yeah, the people with the money may be pulling the strings, but the people that they're pulling along are they're just along for the ride. You know, they're not getting the full information. They're not getting the full picture. They don't see at the end where they don't get to benefit. You know what I mean? They're just like, they, they, they've been talked into believing a certain truth. And the sad part about it is you have a whole uh, um, portion of the people on this side saying they're lying to you over here. Mm -hmm. But these people, they can't hear it because the people you said that have the money, they think represents them. And they want to keep this these people on their side. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, they're not telling them the truth. So as long as they can pull the strings and control this whole side of you know, the, the people uh, who believe in what they say, we're going to have problems and it's going to continue to be that way. And it's going to be, those problems are going to be deep. But I think we need to get back to 
knowing your neighbor, mm -hmm. knowing the person next to you, the person you work with, the person down the street, the person, you know, make some personal connection. And that cuts out a lot of the rest of the BS that comes with it. You know what I mean? Because if they're talking about people as a whole, which they do, Mexicans, Blacks, Muslims, they talk about it as a whole. But when you start making connections with people, you're like, oh, I got some friends like that. They're not like that. Or I know some people over there. No, they're not like that. You know what I mean? So then they start to see for themselves and seeing for yourself is greater than anybody, anything anybody can tell you, especially when you have your mind made up. Making your own decisions off of, based off of what your experiences are. So that's why I would encourage people, where do we go from here? We get to know each other better. We, be to, we, we get to be more tolerant of each other and um, not be so divisive. Try to, try, try to understand where the other person is coming from. And more, more importantly, more importantly, understanding that you're not always gonna be right. I'm not always gonna be right. You're not always gonna be right. And you have to learn to accept that. That's where I think the bulk of this healing begins. Because if I can call out somebody on my side of the aisle that I think is full of it, you should be able to do the same. And at the, vet, and at the end of the day, I believe to get to where we could be okay, that's all that any of us is asking for. If I call out the bullshit, I need you to call out the bullshit too. This needs to be a bullshit free conversation so we can get down to business. And until each side does that completely, unfortunately, it's gonna be a struggle. It's gonna be a fight and that's why we're in it. And that's why I thank you guys for being here tonight. Thank you for the invite. Thanks for having thank us. You. Thank you for having us. Great, love that you guys came. This has been the HTC Hot Topic Discussion. Brought to you by NR Pro Media, and we'll see you all next time. Good night, everyone. Later.